Welcome everyone to our class on digital citizenship. My name is Julie Hageman and I'm going to be your instructor today. Today we're going to talk about an important topic. As teachers, it's important to realize that 93% of all children use the internet in 2013. 93%. And this number is only expected to rise in the future. We have to face it. Our students will be using the internet. So, looking at this, what do you think the problem is? Well, sadly, this is a huge problem. The headlines are full of horror stories about children and the internet. From cyberbullying to violence to sexting, the internet has spawned a whole new series of problems that parents and teachers have never had to face before. Now, all of you are training to be K-12 teachers, so my question to you is this. How can we keep our students from becoming the next headline on the nightly news? What can we actually do to stop this? Well, schools all over the country are attempting to combat these problems by creating acceptable use policies. Now, an acceptable use policy, simply stated, is a set of rules that regulates how a student can or cannot use the Internet. Most districts require that this document be read and signed by both the parents and the students, so everyone knows the rules. So, do you think this actually solves the problem? I'm afraid not. Many times, a school's acceptable use policy is written in terms that a child can't even understand. The same policy that is given to a senior in high school is often given to a first grader. That brings about a big problem. Just having a student sign a paper doesn't mean they understand what it says. Another problem with acceptable use policies is that they often are not even relevant to what the students are actually doing on the Internet. A good acceptable use policy should be updated yearly in order to stay abreast of all the new trends that are happening in technology. But sadly, many of these policies are irrelevant and they're out of date. We know that these digital issues cannot be solved on a district level. They must be solved on a personal level. A recent NPR broadcast took a hard look at why students and schools need to do a better job at teaching digital citizenship. A freshman at Rutgers University jumped off a bridge after other students embarrassed and bullied him online. Sadly, this is just one case out of many that we are seeing on the news today. That is why we as teachers have to step up our game. Our job as teachers has always been to train our students how to become good citizens. We want them to understand the rules and the laws and respect the rights of others. We want them to help make the community a better place. The same is true in this digital age. We must train our students to be responsible digital students. What is a digital citizen? Well, a digital citizen is when we're training our students to use technology and the Internet in a responsible and a positive way. It's using the Internet to better themselves and to better society as a whole. Now, Mike Ribble, in his book, Digital Citizenship in Schools, came up with nine elements that make up digital citizenship. Understanding these elements can really help us better prepare our students to become good digital citizens. Now, the first element asks, do all students have access to this new digital world? Too many times, students don't have the opportunities to fully access the digital resources available to them. Students with disabilities or from low socioeconomic areas may not have access to the same resources as other children their age. Since so many of their jobs today involve technology, this can have a ne negative ad impact on their future careers. In a recent broadcast on NPR, Eric Westervelt looked at a school in California who was working on bringing digital access to all children. This district began an initiative to get iPads in the hands of all the students in their low-income school district. Now, programs like this give digital access to students who may not have previously had any. 
as teachers, we must make sure all of our students are given access and opportunities to become good digital citizens, no matter what their economic status, their race, or their disability. Now, the second element has to do with digital commerce, which is the buying and selling of things electronically. Now, maybe you think, my students don't buy things online. Wrong. According to a study by Harris Interactive, children from the ages of 8 to 24 spent $220 billion online in 2009. This is why we must teach our students to become good digital consumers. With all the internet scams and identity theft and privacy invasions, children need to know how to protect themselves. And as teachers, it's our job to teach them how to do that. Now, the third element is digital communication. Our children are exchanging digital information throughout the day, whether it be through text, chats, social media, online games, or even in virtual worlds. Communication has surged to a whole other level. In fact, it is so easy to communicate online that sometimes we forget that once we send that message or picture, it can easily show up in other places, too. Children need to be taught how to communicate safely and responsibly in this digital age. The fourth element is digital literacy. Here we ask the question, do our students know how to use technology effectively? Just this past week, I talked to a parent who was angry and upset at the school district. Her daughter was told she must do all of her language arts assignments online and on the computer, but she did not have a computer at home. She had never even learned how to use one. As teachers, we can't assume that just because we live in this digital age, every child understands how to use a computer. We have to be able to train our students the best way possible. The fifth element is digital etiquette. Have you ever been in an important meeting and someone stops mid-sentence to send or text or answer a call? This can be so frustrating. We need to teach our students to consider others' feelings when they are using technology. With the rise of cyberbullying, this is even more important than ever before. We have to train our students to consider the feelings of others before they send a message, picture, or an inappropriate Facebook post. The sixth element is digital law. Today's students have access to a huge array of music, movies, and other downloads. Often, however, students do not think about what is appropriate or even legal. We have to teach our students what the law says about digital property and what the legal ramifications might be for downloading things that do not belong to them. The seventh element is digital rights and responsibilities. As American citizens, we have certain rights and responsibilities that we must uphold. The same is true in the digital world. When students create something digitally, they have the right to publish their work. They also have the right of free speech. In the same way, however, they also have the responsibility to follow and obey the rules and laws and to respect the work of other people. The eighth element is digital health and wellness. This is a topic that is often overlooked when training students to become good digital citizens. Problems with eye strain and posture are common among children who spend large amounts of time on computers. Even more troubling than that is the possibility of psychological problems due to technology addictions. On a recent broadcast on NPR, Steve Hinn looked at how online marketers are creating games that can often become addictive to children. These games have built-in rewards that actually release dopamine in the brain and make us want to play more. That is why it is vital that children be taught how to use technology in responsible and in healthy ways. The ninth and final element is digital security. In our homes, we teach our children to lock the doors and windows every night and to make sure that they're kept safe. But in our digital world, we also have to teach our students how to keep safe. Students need to understand and be able to use antivirus software and even firewalls. They need to be taught to keep their passwords private and not to share them with anyone. Students also must be trained not to give out or post personal information which can be used to harm them in the future. This 
is a very serious issue. And as teachers, we have to address this in the classroom. By teaching these nine elements, we can make sure our students are safe and protected and will become good digital citizens in the future. The references I used are listed right here. And if you have any questions, remember to email me at julie.hageman at right.edu.